Welcome to my lecture online. Here we have four graphs that hopefully will help us understand the concept of the average power delivered in an RCL circuit. But before we fully grasp that, we need to take it one step at a time. We're going to take a look at a purely resistive circuit first, a purely inductive circuit, a purely capacitive circuit, and then we're going to take a resistance and then in, in this case inductor combination. It could be an RCL circuit where the effect of the uh, inductor is larger than the effect of capacitor such that it acts like an RL circuit. But first let's take a look at a purely resistive circuit. Notice that the phase between the voltage and the current is equal to zero. That's what we're indicating right here. And so the average power delivered will be in phase with the current and the voltage. It will be one half the maximum voltage times the maximum current. Notice that it is times the cosine of the phase angle between the two, but of course the cosine of zero is indeed one. And so that then the average power delivered to the resistor in a purely resistive circuit. If we now take a look at a purely inductive circuit, Notice that there's going to be a phase angle of 90 degrees between the voltage and the current. The voltage will lead the current by 90 degrees, which means that the voltage appears 90 degrees to the left on the graph right here. And then the power delivered, notice we have positive power, we have negative power, we have positive power, we have negative power, in such a way that the average power delivered is equal to zero. There's no resistor to dissipate the power and the inductor will simply absorb power and give it back, absorb power and give it back so that there's no net absorption of power by the inductor. Notice here that the power for the purely resistive circuit is always positive so there's no negation of the power because the curve does not go negative. When we have a purely capacitive circuit, we have a similar result as we have for the inductor, except that the phase shift will now be different. Now the current will lead the voltage by 90 degrees, so that the phase shift between the voltage and the current is now a negative 90 degrees, but the power average delivered is still equal to zero, because the phase shift, we'll see that we have negative, positive, negative, positive power, and so when we add it all together, the average power will be zero. Notice on the phase, phase angle right here, that the current will lead the voltage, so the voltage is 90 degrees behind the current. But when we have a what we call RCL circuit, in this case the inductor is more effective than the, than the capacitor, we have essentially an RL circuit, notice that the voltage will still lead the current but it's no longer by 90 degrees, and because it's less than 90 degrees we have to take the cosine of the angle, the phase angle, into account that the average power is one half the maximum voltage times the maximum current times the cosine of the phase angle between them. Notice we'll have more power on the positive side, less power on the negative side, so that the negative will not negate the positive, and there will be some average power available to the resistor, but not as much as if it was a purely resistive circuit. So you can see that there all the power is positive. Here part of it is negative, part is positive. The bigger the phase angle, the more that the power curve shifts downward, and when the phase angle is 90 degrees, it has a half of the power is above, half the power is below, that we have an average power of zero in that case. So hopefully these graphs help us understand how the shift of the phase between the current and the voltage affects the power dissipated by the circuit. If it's purely inductive or purely capacitive, there's no power dissipation. If it's purely resistive, then it's the po average power is one half, the maximum voltage, the maximum current. And if it's not purely resistive, resistive but not purely capacitive or inductive, it's a combination of them, then you can see that the shift is such that the phase angle is less than 90 degrees and the average power can be calculated by this equation. And that's how it's done.